Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and moving between game engines is getting easier and easier thanks to uh, better interchange formats. We have GLTF and USD, and I'm actually going to show you how to use both of those in the Unity engine. Although I'm going to warn you straight up front, one of them kind of sucks for now, but in the future it'll probably be the best option. So what you see in front of you, this is Unity. This is uh, a Cinti scene. I love using Cinti scenes because they actually convert incredibly well. Uh, so they're a good just baseline example. And what I'm going to show you is how to get this out from Unity and into, let's say, the Godot game engine or Blender or whatever. I'm going to use Godot in today's example because Godot's like, preferred file format is actually GLTF. And what we're doing this with is something called GLTF. Fast. So this is available as an add-on, add it in your package manager. So I've actually already installed it in this particular project. So you're going to notice here uh, we have GLTF fast. This is added by adding it via a GitHub link. I'll show you the GitHub URL in just a second. On top of that, we also have this guy right here, the USD core and Explorer. Again, these are pretty early on. Uh, the USD format is probably the most comprehensive one, uh, but they've created a uh, an importer exporter for the Unity game engine for using USD as well. I'll show you it, and to be honest, it, it kind of sucks. But in time, I hope it will actually get better. So here we are. Again, here is our level. Let's show you how to use the GLTF fast first. Uh, and this one is done really easy. Basically, load your scene, go to File, uh, and then go to Export Scene, and you can export it as a GLB file or a GLTF file. GLB is the easiest way to go. I'll dump it out here, Demo Bunker, sure. And we'll let it do its thing. It's actually pretty quick. Now, it's not perfect, as we will see uh, with another sample scene that we're going to use in a second. Uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead and export that one out. Uh, that is going to temp. So let's see, there it is out right now. I've already got a Godot project loaded. So let's create a new scene and let's dump that into our scene. So let's open it up right there. Uh, and this guy should still be open over here. So all we're going to do is take the generated GLB file and copy it into our scene. And obviously it's going to do all of its importing work and all of that stuff. Uh, this isn't really fun to watch. It only takes a couple of seconds, but uh, I'll pause it while it's updating. All right, a couple seconds later, it is loaded. Let's grab our scene and drop it in. And there you go. Like I said, Cinti stuff comes across incredibly well. So there uh, is our original bunker and here is our final bunker. The only thing that really kind of changed is for some reason, this guy isn't black. I don't know what's going on there. And then a lot of this obviously is just the world environments are different. So if I set up a world environment in Godot, I can get the rendering to look very similar. So again, here, new environment down here. I could set up how the ambient lighting works. I could, uh, one thing I almost always do is change the tone mapper from say linear to filmic or to aces like so. Uh, and then of course you could come in here, turn on global illumination if you so wished, etc. Get them kind of looking very similar to each other. But here you can see again, this is the exported result inside of Godot. And here is the original coming down. So again, your lighting and rendering is a bit different, but otherwise, let's go back over, take a look at the same thing. So let's go down here and over here and look at the same thing. You'll see basically it is over and done, and that was incredibly super simple. So that's really all that's involved. By the way, this process works in both directions. So you can also import GLTF into um, the uh, Unity game engine. By the way, you can also export out. So you can export as GLTF2 from Godot. So you can actually move from Godot to Unity as well, if you wish, using this. And of course, it is not bringing across your logic. This is just bringing across, you know, scenes, textures, and things like that. Now, it's not always a perfect process. So I'm going to head on back over to Unity, and we will showcase a different scene. So let's go here. Uh, I think it's Barking Dog, Sci-Fi Base, and... Scenes, example zero one. Nope, that's not it. One second. Oh, it's right here in the root. All right, so let's load up example zero one and zoom in on our level. And then what you're going to see, this is a different setting. This is a sci-fi base setting, uh, a much more elaborate level. And what you're going to notice is the shortcomings of this process. So here you can see uh, you got this base inside of this base. You've got all kinds of things going on here. 
uh, and so on. But you also have all of this train. Spoiler alert, train isn't going to work that well. Once again, same process. We come up here, file. Uh, then we can export the scene and we can again export it as a GLB scene. Uh, we pick the directory we wish it to go in. So sure, example 01 GLB and we export this one out. Uh, so this is going to take a little bit because this is obviously a bigger scene. Uh, but again, the export is actually quite fast. So you can see here, there it is done. Same process as before. So we're going to basically go from there to our, um, our Godot example. And uh, yeah, so uh, probably not looking as good as you would expect it to. But what you're actually noticing here, there's a couple things going on. First, our lighting isn't really compatible. So you'd have to do a lot of tweaking of the lighting of this setup to make it work well. And then what you're also noticing is your terrain didn't come in for squat. Now, your various different rocks did, but your terrain and your instantiated trees did not come in. Now, fortunately, there is still a workaround to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to head on back over to Unity and we're going to showcase a different setup. So if you go into your level right here, you could actually pick uh, an area of it. So if I wanted to bring in just uh, an aspect of it or bits of it, so I could go ahead and say, you know, right here, uh, create a new game object. So here, call this whatever I wanted to do. And then what I'm going to do basically do is pick the things that I actually want to bring over. Uh, and then maybe not particularly the directional lighting or anything, and maybe not the clouds. So let's get the cloud out of there. Unfortunately, some of these are going to have um, some things in them as well. But I'm going to basically take these guys and I'm going to parent them to my export object like so. And then again, you can come into here uh, and pick the individual aspects you wish. But I'm going to go ahead. We'll just pick the export object here. So instead of doing the entire scene via file, export scene, what you can also do is just pick uh, an entity in the world like this guy right here. And you can go ahead and do export GLTF and then again, GLP binary and yeah, export objects is going to go by the name of what it, it had. And then we'll go ahead and export that one out. And another thing you could also notice, you come down here to say like a prefab, uh, you could also take a prefab, right click and export as GLTF. So you can see here, export GLTF, you can export it there as well. So it doesn't have to be the entire scene. It can just be the individual pieces you're interested in. And then once again, import it into the Godot game engine. And now you'll notice we have a much more usable scene. Again, you're going to have to recreate the terrain. The terrain does not come across, but you'll notice the 3D objects definitely do. And they come across with very nice detail. So what you're going to, again, all of the lights came in exactly as you expect. I think it might have been the global light that was screwing things up. But you can bring things in and they do look quite nice. I do want to showcase this actually because uh, you... you don't get a perfect translation. You do for static meshes, building stuff like this. But again, things like terrain, uh, the instance foliage, all of that kind of stuff. No, it does not come across. But you see here, even the, your lighting is available. So you got the various different uh, lighting aspects in. So if you were going to go ahead and actually make tweaks to this, you can actually move things around. Now, why it's so far off the origin, I do not actually know. Uh, but Everything is is brought across as you would expect. So again, you can see here a variety of different lights are brought into the world that you could go ahead, uh, tweak and edit to your heart's content. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. That is the import. That is the end result of the import process. Uh, I think on the whole, it, it's um, it's pretty impressive. Like again, and then you can tweak it however you wish in your world. Uh, but you can also, again, as we just showcased, bring across a single item. So if you just wanted to bring one item over from your aspect, just basically export it out as GLTF. Now, those have been the showcases I've shown so far. But there is another option. There's USD. Now, USD is early in experimental format. If you want to bring it out, it's pretty much the same process. Actually, what we just did, where we put all of the stuff together into an export uh, game object, that's probably the approach you want to take with USD. So once you've got the USD or Universal Scene Descriptor, I think it might be, uh, once you've got that plugin installed, what you do is basically put everything together like so, and then come up here at USD, uh, you pick the item that you wish to export, so pick whatever you want from your uh, hierarchy over here. I think you can either export it as a USDZ or export selected with children. We'll do it with children, export object USD, and export that out. Um, now, this actually does take a little bit longer. Uh, we'll let that go ahead and run. And uh, now Blender, sorry, the Godot game engine does not have support for USD, uh, but Blender does. Now, everywhere and everyone are currently working on their USD import. So bye-bye default cube. Uh, the... Um, the implementations aren't always amazing. So if it's a, is it a Blender at fault here, Max or Maya or Unity, uh, it's hard to exactly tell. But what you're going to see in a second is the USD is not perfect yet, but it is definitely coming soon. Okay, so it seems to be done. 
Let's go on up here. We'll do a file. We will import and you have a USD out of the box. You're going to notice over here, USD is available there. Uh, then what we'll do is head on down to the uh, temp folder like so. And that is our export object available right here. And we will just go ahead and import that in. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. Now, the weird thing I don't get, and this might be just me not getting it, is everything is parented to the origin in this very weird manner. So let me just go ahead and select nothing. We'll go into navigate mode and let's go fly up and take a look at our world. So this is the USD export. Again, you're not going to get train out. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. In time, you will. It's one of those things they are still working on. Let me just speed this up a little bit. So you can see USD export out, dealing with it in Blender. And you might think, hey, that looks pretty good. And it's not bad. It's, it's pretty good for bringing in static meshes. We'll go inside the interior here. You're going to see that was all brought in. Now we're going to show you the flaw. So let's go over to a rendered mode over here. Uh, it's going to take a while to compile all the shaders in. Uh, while we're here, I'm going to switch over to uh, world view here and turn my light, my ambient light up. And now what you're going to notice is, yeah, I, I, I don't know why, but basically textures in USD have this weird ghosting double effect. Some come across, as you're going to see over here. Uh, some definitely do not. So it's one of those things definitely to be aware of. Uh, by the way, uh, let me just kill this scene. All right, sacrifice another default cube. Uh, while we are in Blender, I'm going to showcase using that guy we used earlier on. You'll notice you have GLTF support in Blender as well. Uh, so that should be available. Let's go back to temp. So our first bunker demo should work just fine in Blender as well. I, I demonstrated it the first time using Godot, uh, but you can use it in Blender as well. So here you can see imported into Blender like so. Let me just de-highlight everything. Again, you're going to notice it's just a lighting change. So come down here, change your default lighting to more of a you know flat white. And then you will notice, boom, everything imports into Blender as well. Now you're not getting the colored lights. Uh, that seems to be the biggest difference. So this light right here uh, was colored. Uh, and then for some reason, GLTF imported into Blender. It does not work. But when we went into Godot, I think I still have it open over here. Those colored lights come in just fine. So just one of those things to be aware of. Nothing is flawless, but the GLTF export definitely works better than it used to in the past. It's a two-way export. So again, you could uh, come into Godot, create your scene, and you could export it out to go the other way as well. I like seeing GLTF get some love for sure. Uh, though ultimately, I think down the road, the USD will probably be the most comprehensive solution out there. So this GLTF package, they announced it last month. It's now called Unity GLTF. Fast or GLT Fast. Uh, the thing is, this was a, an existing project uh, created by uh, one of their other developers there. So they actually hired the person to create it. So Andreas, uh, he created it back in uh, 2018. He joined Unity in 2020. And now they've moved this package in-house. So they now maintain the repository. They have rebranded it to this here. Uh, so it is now called GLTF Fast. There is documentation for it, which is actually quite nice. So let's just pop open the documentation. And now you've actually got details of how things actually work for both importing and using it at runtime, which is a good thing. On top of that, they also added KTX for Unity. Uh, this is a new texturing format for basis universal textures. Uh, it should just make uh, your textures more accurate when dealing with GLTF import and export, uh, which is nice as well. So this, as you saw briefly there, is available as a repository. What you do is basically take this repository right here, this name, com.unity.cloud.gltf if you want to go ahead and add this guy. And then inside of Unity, you go Windows, and then you go Package Manager, and you can add a package, install from Git URL, and then just do com.gltf fast, blah, blah, blah. And that's how you would import this guy in. Same deal for the USD export that is available over here. So the new open USD package is now available. Uh, they're showing much better results than what I'm getting. I'm seeing like really, really bad results, but this is also very early on. Uh, so there's a bunch of things that are still being worked on here. Um, and there is an exporter as well for getting things out of USD. What you'll find with USD though, is like when I saw Unreal Engine's implementation of USD, it was absolutely 
brilliant. If you're interested in checking that one out, check out my Omniverse video, NVIDIA Omniverse, and you can get a hint of what USD will eventually be capable of. By the way, if you want to get things out of the Unity game engine, these aren't your only options. There's also, uh, this one is excellent. I will link this article down below. Uh, there is a commercial plugin called Utu that I covered in the past uh, that will bring scenes, static meshes, skeletal meshes, materials, textures, prefabs, lights, and cameras over to the Unreal Engine. It works as a plugin for both systems and it works very well. So if you want to move from Unity to Unreal Engine and you're willing to spend a little bit of money, this is probably your best option out there. And he's made like five or six updates since I first covered this. Impressive little plugin, definitely worth the 25 bucks if you're using Unreal Engine or if you want to migrate your Unity project to Unreal Engine. And if you are in Godot land, there are a couple options here as well. Unfortunately, one of these, um, the one that's built with Rust. I think it's Unity Package Godot. Uh, it is no longer being updated or wasn't being updated, so you've got to build it yourself, which is a little annoying, but building Rust code is pretty easy just for the, the importer-exporter aspect. Uh, but there are... Um, you know, walk through instructions here too uh, for getting directly from Unity to Godot. Basically, there is a plugin out there for Godot for bringing Unity packages over. Another option available as well. But realistically, this is probably the easiest way now. This GLTF, uh, GLT Fast package. Again, it's been, the GLTF importer has been around for a while, but is now an officially supported project with documentation, its own repository. It is inside of Unity. It is something they are committing to develop for uh, going forward. And it does kind of free you from the shackles a bit. So that is a new set of ways to get things into or out of the Unity game engine, the GLTF package, and the new uh, US Open USD package. The Open USD package, like I said, in my experiences, isn't that great yet. But I actually think that this is the one that you want to keep an eye on for the future because I think this will ultimately be the one that gives you the most picture perfect result because USD was again uh, originally designed for film and, and super high precision transfer but it's nice to see them moving towards GLTF and USD and away from like FBX and DAE Collada was going to be an open source that's DAE uh, open source standard but it just got so overly complicated and, and you know, cumbersome fast that people just kind of stuck with FBX, which is the film box format, which basically auto desk controls. So having these two new ascendant open standards, it kind of locks us in. So if, if let's say, for example, a game engine company does something really, really stupid and you want to move away from them, well, this makes it so you can get your assets out again, not necessarily your train. So all of this background stuff still didn't come out, but recreating the train, honestly, is generally not that hard. And it's normally a game engine specific thing in the first place. So you wouldn't want to bring the train and trees across this polygonal meshes. You'd probably want to use whatever your native system is for those things anyways. So it's a very rapid way of bringing either individual assets or entire levels across. And hopefully you found that useful. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.